Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Holy Spirit everywhere. Please, Holy Spirit, help me today. Um, running a little late, so we're going to talk real fast because i got a lot to cover. And, uh, I, uh, I uh, did the same thing. I looked at this Thursday, and I wrote some notes down Thursday, uh, right there, Friday, there, <laughs> and last night about 2 in the morning. Right? So I think we're going to stop there. Uh, so we're on the uh, the sheep and the goats. Uh, they're in chapter uh, in Matthew 25, uh, verses 31 through 46. Uh, let me see if I can find that here. Uh, has anybody ever heard this parable before? The sheep and the goats. Huh? It's in the parable book, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I read it. You read it? Read it you read it? You probably know what it is. I'd pick it up last week. Amen. I did Amen. take my Bible. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You look great. It's good to see you. Um, the uh, sheep and the goats. Let's read this here just to get into it. Uh, I, uh, Danielle said, if uh, anyone who was wondering, she's been busy with the kids and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Let's turn to that. Now, we've got to remember this is at Mount Olivet. Uh, he's talking directly to the, uh, the disciples. Uh, if we go back to 24, we're talking about the end of times. What's the signs, pestilence, uh, you know, uh, war, earthquakes they talked about. I mean, all the things that are happening now. We probably had a hundred earthquakes last week, really, to add in the mud. There's war in every corner of the, of the country, of the world. Uh, we don't hear about them all, you know, Congo, South America. Uh, we don't hear about all this stuff. Iran, uh, Afghanistan and India is in a constant uh, war all the time. Uh, Russia, of course, and Ukraine, which is a crazy war. You got Poland over there. Uh, Israel and, and the Palestinians are not so much Palestinians, but Hamas, uh, it's crazy. It's, it could be the end of times. And we say, what do we say? We don't care. You know, we keep it simple because that's the only way I can keep it. It's simple. <laughs> you know, we want to be ready. We want to be ready today, right, Mom? We want to be ready today. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're talking about judgment. We're in uh, the culmination of the kingdom. Uh, let's look at some of the stuff that we have looked at real fast. Uh, we're on the nature of the kingdom and uh, the coming of the kingdom. We read the sower and the soils. We read the wheat and the weeds. Uh, the seed growing secretly. I don't know how it grows. It grows in our heart. I don't know. I see it. Though. I can see it growing, but I don't know how it grows. I don't know. I'm 11. But then in that dough, it grows. I don't know how it grows. I have no, you know, I don't know. Paul could probably tell you he's a, uh, he's a chemist. But uh, you got Jesus and Bozo over here, the strong man. It's not an even fight, guys. It's not an even fight. Everybody thinks it's Satan here and Jesus here. No, it's not. He's a sneaker, a liar, a cheater, an accusator. He has to come up with trickery. He was defeated at Calvary. He's done. And he's going to go and be bound and go to hell for a thousand years. I think we read that last week. Uh, I think TJ read that in Revelations last week. Uh, so we, we're going through the nature of the kingdom. Then we did the value of the kingdom. We talked about the uh, hidden treasure. When the treasure was in there and the man found the treasure and he went and sold everything because he wanted that treasure. And then I flipped it around and Ben said that treasure was us. And that uh, God went and gave his son, <clears throat> gave everything he got so he could own us because he loved us. Uh, that was a, a good one. And then the combination of the kingdom, these last three that we've been reading, the fish, the, uh, the fish net, pretty simple. You got the good fish, you got the bad fish, right? Just like the weeds in the wheat, right? The wheat going to the kingdom of heaven, going to God's barn. The weeds are going to get bundled up and thrown in the lake of fire. In Jesus' words, not my uh, Jesus actually talks about hell a lot. A whole lot. Uh, 
really even more than I thought. We had the wise and foolish virgins, and what did we get out of that one, guys? Uh, don't miss an opportunity, right? Right? Today is the day of what? Today is the day of salvation. Every day is the day of salvation until Jesus comes. Don't miss an opportunity, especially when we hear this here, because this is not really a parable of what we're going to read today. It's a whole different kind of verbiage. He's talking about kings. He's not talking about sword. He's not talking about sword. He's not talking about trees, bro. He's getting right down to the nitty gritty here. And uh, I'm going to read this. And we're going to go over this. Hopefully we can get through this because uh, there was a lot laid on my heart on this. So we are in Matthew 25. Uh, verse, we're going to start at verse 31. The sheep and the goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, what was that somebody asked him? Uh, and, all, and, all, uh, and all of the angels with him, he will sit on the glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another. A shepherd separates as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. So he's talking about the Son of Man is coming in glory. This is a little different than what he's been saying in all these other parables, right? He's not, uh, he's not talking about a sower, or an abstract sower that we knew was Jesus or us. We were sowers too. He's saying, uh, he's telling the disciples about the end of times. And this is the end of times right here. The king will say to those on the right, Come ye who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. What is our inheritance as Christians, as true sheep? What is our inheritance? What do we Amen, sister. That is our inheritance. And take the Lord's inheritance makes us children of God, makes us princesses of God, makes us princes of God. We are uh, mighty people. We got a mighty shepherd, right? We may be sheep, but we got a mighty shepherd. Uh, the kingdom prepared for you, says the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me some, something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will, will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you, a stranger, invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you, and he calls us brothers and sisters, you did for me. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for, for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, Lord, uh, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help? He will reply, truly I will tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me, then he will go away to eternal punishment. Then they will go away to eternal punishment. But the righteous to 
Eternal life. Amen, sister. Eternal life. Let's put down prayer real quick. Heavenly Father, I ask you to be with me uh, quickly here with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I've got a lot dancing on here, and I, I want to get through this. This is a very, uh, this is it, man. This is the ball game. This is where we're going to meet the Father. This is where we're going to be with the Father. And hopefully we're sheep. We want everybody to be a sheep. Uh, we, just, we just want to drop seeds of salvation where people know that this is serious. There's going to be a judgment. And we must be on the side of the sheep. And there's a lot of things that we need to learn about this. Amen. Uh, before I leave, I'm going to give uh, TJ, I'm going to give you a job. It's time to go back to the most important uh, verse in that, okay? Because I might forget. It's the most important verse in there you may not think is the most important. And I think it is. So what does Jesus tell us in a summary of this? What does he tell us? That we should help and take care of our brothers and sisters. Amen, sister. Earthly brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. You're right. We should help. We should have a heart to help. We should do it, you know, not out of works. It almost sounds like works is going to save us, right? We didn't know about it. The whole, the whole gospel says that works is not going to help us, you know. Uh, we're saved by faith. Works alone. Yeah, well, we're saved by faith, which gives us that nobody can boast, not through works. We do works out of love, out of love of God. We do them naturally out of love, and that has something to do with the, big, the greatest, uh, the greatest paragraph in this in this whole thing. Uh, you know, the goats had a chance, right? They missed an opportunity. They had a chance. Today's your opportunity. If you're listening to this. And you think you're a goat? Today's your opportunity to be a sheep. You can be a sheep. Right here. Ready for Southern Baptist Church. Right, County? You can be a sheep. You can come and hear the call, hear the call, and you can come. And we want you to come. Bring everybody. Bring everybody. Bring them all. You know, church is messed up, right? And that church, you know, there's the, the, the shepherds separated the goats and the sheep. They were all together, weren't they? Right? So there's goats in the church. So what? In church, I was saved. In church, I got a call. In church, I was appointed. And I was anointed. And I inherited the kingdom of heaven. That all happened in church. People say, I don't need to go to church. I watch TV. You need to go to church. And you need to read your Bible. The Word of God. The living Word of God. You need to do it. I'm sorry, because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do when I'm in that line. And Jesus already knows it. I'm going to say, Jesus, can I talk to them? Can we try to save those guys over there? And he's going to say, Fred, it's too late. And I'm going to say, please, 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 don't, don't continue to speak to me. These people are me. These people are me, and I answered your call. That's a new race online. That's it. It's a new life. Common. It is. It's a new life. Amen. You know, when we go through our spiritual thing, we're driving down the road, we look through a, a rear view mirror. And in that rear view mirror, you know, I, I can get angry, man. I can get real angry. And I used to do it all the time. And I look in that rear view mirror and I see how I did it. I'm just not there anymore. I can still get angry. I can still get real angry. Just not quite as often. I'm not there anymore. I'm still driving through salvation. Uh, I'm still trying to be like Jesus, and that's what he wants us to be. He wants us to see the world, right? He wants us to see the world like he does, like he does. And what does he do throughout the gospel? What does Jesus do throughout the gospel? Every time. Who is he hanging around with? Somebody tell me. Prostitutes. Amen, sister. Prostitutes, tax collectors, and the number one sinners, all of us, right? Right? If Jesus was here today, would he be at the, I don't know, the Christmas Cathedral or, or the St. Billy? No! He'd be where they were shooting drugs and where, uh, you know, people were being prostituted and all these things, kids were being abused. That's where Jesus would be. And we have to have a heart for that. And it has to come natural. And natural, and it does. As you move along in your salvation, it does, right? It does. You're a little, you're a little more gentle. You get to, when you get the fruit of the spirit and you get the kindness and joy, you want to do these things. You want to help those people that are left behind. And I do it out of gratitude. Because if not for him, 
That's me. No doubt about it. I've been the best one in my truck. I, you know, I was about as big a bum as you could be at one time. Uh, still in maybe I don't know. That's the baby like this. Uh, but anyway, this this uh, ending of the culmination, this day is going to come, and we're going to be there. We should not fear. Don't come to God in fear. Come to God in love. Come to God in joy. Come to God in what he's going to give you. He's going to give you a life, and he's going to give it to you more abundantly. Today, right now, we don't, you don't have to get cleaned up. You don't have to take 10 Hail Marys. You don't have to go to the priest. You don't have to do nothing. When Paul says, come, you come. Right? You give your life to Jesus Christ, and we're going to get in a warm baptism. Walker. We need a baptism around here, right? Amen? We need a baptism around here right now. You know, Paul is getting, uh, he's getting wore out of her, right? But seriously, if you think, if you think you're not a sheep, go up. <coughs> go up. Rededicate. There's doubt, right? There's doubt. We're fleshy people. We, you know, we just, I, we're fleshy. We are. Uh, it's very simple. Sometimes I just got to start reading the Bible, just open it up to read it, because I'm in some kind of la la land, crazy thing. Uh, you know, but in this, uh, Jesus talks about he is the son of man, so he is all for you. He's sitting on, he's sitting on the, uh, the throne of the kingdom. So uh, could someone please help me here and find Daniel 7, verse 14. Daniel 7, verse 14. have super glue on my fingers and couldn't feel them. Oh, I sorry. could turn the pages. Sorry guys, jumped up on you on that. I just can't turn the pages. I got another one, Matthew 28, 18, or someone wants to go Well, there. I got Daniel. Okay. He has given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nations of the world so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Amen. Amen. Wow. Uh, that was written at least 400 years before Jesus was born. Daniel had a dream about the king. We just read it. Jesus just said it out of his mouth. Right? Something happened. I can't help but have to say that today. Something happened, right? Something happened. That was 400 years. Uh, Matthew 28, 18. Can we find out? Can I say something real quick? Yes, ma'am. Um, I need to find it. But Lana and I saw something the other day, and it was a guy that put up this graph of all of <coughs> the references and stories and accounts in the Bible from start to finish. And all the cross references, and they were written, you know, so many years apart, before, right. after, and by so many different people in different countries, and how it all overlapped, and they told the same story. It was really neat. I don't have to find it. Because he was like, even it. the most educated scholar never could have written a story no. with that much. No. And it was written by, I don't know how many different people, 40 different people, all in different countries, you know. At different times, it was really neat. I'll try and find that. And bring it in. Amen. Yeah, I like to see that. Uh, and it is you know, all throughout the Bible. It's like that. You know, you look at the, the Old Testament, and there's so much spoken in Jesus, which makes it hard for me to believe that they couldn't see who this man was because they didn't want a Messiah. We say that over and over again. Well, we don't get the Messiah we wanted, Israel. We got Jesus Christ, but we got we got more. He always gives you more, right, Sam? Amen. He always gives you more. Anything he's given me, he's given me more. That lot's going to be full. It's going to be overflowing. And that grass over there. We're going to have we're going to have a prison ministry. We're going to have a food ministry for people in need. We're going to have a clothing ministry for people in need. We're going to have a ministry for single mothers. We're going to have a ministry for people who are addicted. You just wait and see. It's coming. It's coming. And it's going to be here. And we want you to be part of it. We want you to be part of it. Come and worship with us. Uh, Tina, 
Hi, if you're out there listening to us, we miss you. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeanette, we miss you. Phyllis, get your butt to church. Uh, <laughs> get your butt to church, Phyllis. That young man that sat in the back of the church a couple weeks ago, listen, guy, you don't even have to come to church. Come in, I want to talk to you just for five minutes. Give me five minutes and let me talk to you. Because I want to see you one more time. You came in here to worship. I can see that. I don't know what went wrong, and, and I don't really care. I just want you to come back. I forgot what your name was. I keep wanting to say Tim, but I know that's over here, so I don't know. But I want you to come back. I want anybody that ever set foot in this church to come back. Right, Ryan? To come back, because this is the new, this is the new Ready First Southern Baptist Church. This isn't the Ready First Baptist Church of 1970. You know, this isn't the Fred of 1970. That's for damn <laughs> This ain't the Fred of 2000 or something. You know, but anyway, that's what we want. We don't want anybody to be a goat, Ryan. We don't want anybody to be a goat. We want everybody to be 100% sure that they are a sheep, that we belong to Jesus, that we let him lead our life as best as we can. As best as we can, and he will do it. Uh, you know, my buddy Gary, and man, I'm missing, he died about a year ago, and we went all through school, second grade on. And every time I seen this man, I like, all we did was laugh. You know, we just start laughing. Well, he went into the goat business. <laughs> I don't know what he did it for. Uh, he was, he's had a little farm out in Independence, and he said he's going to get, someone gave him these goats, and he had this. You know, he's going to make a lot of money. He went to hostess and, and got all their leftovers from the goat. They got sick. Oh. They all got sick. But anyway, what I've learned about goats by seeing them is, man, they're stubborn. Oh, man, they're stubborn. Oh, oh, if you want one to go that way and it don't want to go, it'll lay down on the ground and start shaking and yelling and screaming. i never seen no one like it. Stubborn. And that's what the goats are. That's what the goats are, right? The goat line is stubborn. Don't be stubborn. Listen to the call. Listen to the call. Unharden your heart. If he can save a wretch like me, he can save anybody. We want people to be saved. Period. Exclamation point. It's an easy sell, right, Jennifer? Right? We're going to burn in hell? Does anybody really want to burn in hell? Even a goat doesn't want to burn in hell, I think. But there's only one way you don't. There's only one way we don't. What is that way, Tommy? What's the way we don't go to hell? One way. Through Jesus. Through Jesus. Amen, sister. Amen. A plus. Amen. Uh, let me catch my breath. Uh, you know, salvation is freely. I wrote this down last night. Salvation is freely given and freely received. So we have no excuse to help those people in deep need, right? Who are worse than we are. And sometimes they go, I don't know who's worse than me. I don't believe it. there is somebody out there worse than me. That we're left behind, man. They're left behind educationally. They're left behind uh, economically. They were just left behind and they need they need a boost they need to come to jesus and learn that we love them bring the alcoholics in there bring the prostitutes in there the rest we'll show them that we love them and then we'll hit there and learn that jesus loved them and they'll learn that all those bruises and those strikes he took he took for their inequities and they will come to him they will come to him and their life will be transformed right just like your life was transformed just like my life was transformed just like TJ's life was transformed. Amen? Amen? Just like Dan's life was transformed. You're looking good today, by the way. Watch out. I thought I'd throw that in there. We're going to I know. Dwight, 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 Dwight kind of grew in all the way over there. <laughs> I noticed that we're not matching anymore. <laughs> Dwight's eyeballing you there, friend. Hey, I know. I know. That's he can vacuum, right? I know. That's why I'm way over here. But anyway, look guys, yeah, you, <laughs> you know, we got the, uh, what is it, Matthew 25 up here, does all the wonderful work around the world for people that are in trouble and need and all that. But that just doesn't get it. We can't run out of here and just start helping poor people. 
this stuff. That's trying to buy our way into this, right? Right? What did I tell you to remind you? Told you no, most, important. most important. Let's go back to the sheep and the goats. And let's see here. We can pick up the most important. Let's see if I can pick it up. That you know. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see the hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you? A stranger invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe and clothe you. When did we see you sick in the prison and go visit you? They didn't even know they did it. You get it? They didn't even know they did it. They're sheep. They're going to live forever, and they don't even know. They don't even know because they did it out of love. They did it out of the transformation that Jesus does to us. We can't help it, man. We can't help it, right, Connie? We just can't help it. Uh, you know, a sheep, a sheep is kind of meek, right? You know, but look at our shepherd. We got a creator of the universe. He'll, he'll take care of the fights for us, right? Look at David. David was underestimated. You know, he went out there to fight Goliath, and I'm thinking, do you guys realize he done killed a bear, right? Now he done killed a lion with his bare hands. You know, I'm thinking that this ain't a fair fight. David could, you know, if you can kill a bear and a lion, you can surely kill a giant. He did it with a rock, one swing, bam. He told him, I come in the name of the Lord, and today I will feed your head to the birds. And by God, that's what he did. That's what he did in the rest of his history. And, uh, you know, that's what we can do, too, in the name of the Lord. The Lord gives us strength to do anything. Uh, and he brings us all. We will uh, love you and learn uh, of God's love. I already went over that with everyone I need to come here. Uh, and, and, uh, let's read the 23rd Psalm. Let's, talk, let's read about the shepherd. Psalm 23. I'm here. I know I had not worked I think I did anyway, I don't know. Somebody would mark my Bibles. Uh, I guess they're pretty good. Me? What is that? Oh, <laughs> I said that this morning. Shoot, I forgot yeah, to put right. tabs right. on right. Friday. I know you're busy. I know you're busy. You've seen all that stuff over there. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was impressed with that call. Go buy it. I have more, but I think they're going to be mad at me and not take it. So I'll wait till next week. Did you call them? Usually, if you call them, tell them. I think it's so neat they're going to take it. I think it's so neat that they'll take it. I think it's so neat. I know it's, it's not going to be real hard for them to pick it up. I mean, I, I'm, sorry, I'm impressed with the trick. I didn't even want to I wish I could get a pile like that. You know what I mean? Or even clean stuff. <laughs> you know, those lines were all straight. It was, it was all. I was impressed. Uh, the 23rd Psalm, we've all heard this, we all know this. Uh, this is about the shepherd that leads us, right? This is what David says about the shepherd. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, and mine says, I lack nothing that shall not want. And we don't, we don't want. Yeah, we want, we want stuff, but we lack nothing. He gives us everything. I can look around this room right now. He provides everything for us. No, he don't give me everything I want, you know? But he gives me everything I need. And he gives us all everything we need. Uh, he makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside quiet waters. He wants me to rest. He wants me strong. This is a hard, this is a hard journey we take with the gospel. But I can say this, Paul Adams and me both, we preach and teach an uncompromising gospel. Okay, so we're going to talk about help. Some people don't like to talk about it. But Jesus sure did. And if Jesus did, then I have to. You know? And I'm glad that I'm not going to help. I'm pretty 100% sure. Today. Today. We'll talk different maybe tomorrow, right? <laughs> so today. Uh, he refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path. He says, Fred, I say, Jesus, help me not to sin. I don't want to do this anymore. It takes away from my communion. It takes away from my strength. It takes away from everything. Help me. And he will. Go this way, dummy. Quit doing this over and over again. You know, he, he can get down on that too. And I tell you. And uh, uh, 
he guides us along the path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I don't like this here, the way they wrote this in this book. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We have nothing to fear because who's our shepherd? Who's our shepherd? Who takes care of us? Who tells us to come and we follow? Jesus. Amen. Who can defeat Jesus? The Son of God. The Son of Man. Creator of the universe. Huh? That's our shepherd. Is there anything weak about that? I don't think so. He'll give you all the strength, wisdom, and knowledge you need uh, to, do, to face anything. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like that. Hang in there, brothers and sisters. Just hang in there. Uh, for you are with me, your rod and staff cover me. There you go. He's got a rod and staff sitting right there ready to caulk them lines and, and giants uh, ready to go. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Well, I'll be. Uh, you mean I'm going to be at the, uh, the banquet and they're going to be over here looking at me? Huh? I'm going to be with the sheep, and they're going to be over here with the goats. Going, How did he make it over there? You know, uh, it wasn't uh, C.S. Lewis said, uh, what did he say about heaven? He said, you're going to be, you're going to be surprised who's there, and, uh, and, uh, and then you're going to be surprised who ain't there. <laughs> you know, it's gonna, so you anoint my head with oil, my cup right over the Holy Spirit. Remember we talked about that last week. We fill with the Holy Spirit. Our cup runneth over. We can't lose with Jesus. Listen to David here. He is telling us, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever, eternally. That's what we live for. That's the shepherd we want. We want to be 100% sure we're on the sheep side, the right side. Where's Jesus at right now? He's on the right side. Amen. Amen. He's on the right. We don't want to be on the left side. Not against lefties. But we don't want to be on the left side. Right? We don't want to be a goat. We don't want to be stubborn uh, when Jesus is telling us to come on, laying down, shaking. Ah! I wish you'd seen this goat. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know. You know, I grew up in the right side. Uh, you know, it's a couple other things we got to go. Uh, but anyway, uh, hey, listen, guys. Jesus is the king. I don't even call this a parable, really, because it's just it's just flat out plain full. I'm the king. You're either a sheep, and look what you did for me. Look what you did for me, and you didn't even know it. You didn't even know it, did you? Those are the best kind, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we try to drop seeds of salvation with anyone we come in contact with, and we will. If we treat them right, I don't care how bad they are, give them a smile, tell them the greatness that's in them. Everybody's great. Everybody has something great, something to offer. Look at the sheep. The sheep's wool is valuable, right? What's the goat? What's the goat got? Huh? Do they use goat meat in Slim Jims or something? I don't know. What does a goat? What does a goat milk? Maybe. Sugar. Milk. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay, I'll give them that. I'll give them that. But how are you gonna go get them and get it? You know, and then, then when you try to get it, they're gonna buck you and everything else. So I'm proud to be a sheep. I want everybody to be a sheep. I want everybody out there to be a sheep. Uh, I want you to come visit our church 11 o'clock. I want you to hear Paul Adams preach. Because, brother, if you want to hear the gospel, you will hear the gospel. And I want to see him. That young man, please come back. Please come back. I just want to talk to you. That's it. Hey, everybody. I love you. Thank you. Let's get to church. Amen. <laughs>